Mr. Dibbs. <laughs> I'm from Cincinnati. Whoa. Hmm. I think I have one copy of this. You know what? I don't even remember when we did that. When is this? 2000. Does that sound right? 2000, yeah. Yeah, 99 seems about right. The basic story is Castrucci hit me up and said, I need you to do a soundtrack for photosynthesis video. I said, okay, and he gave me a sheet with times on it, like zero to 30 seconds. Joey not making music, he would be like, and at around seven and a half seconds, make it break down slow, and then, you know, speed it back up, put a drum roll, and some Beatles, and then a flute. <laughs> so, you can hear the flute happened. No Beatles, no drum rolls. I nailed it and he didn't need to adjust any of the music. I followed that timeline really to the T. Like if he wanted it to break down, I got it as close as I could because you can't in the middle of a bar go to your Beatles flute or whatever he, he wanted. He gave me a long list that just had times and he was like, and do all that right. continuously. That's what okay. The flute, he had a, a CD of Greek folk music. I don't know why he had the CD. He gave me like 10 CDs, no records. A lot of them were stolen from the library. They still had the like the checkout cards in them. Right. Most of what he gave me was like, would have been in the ethnic section. If they didn't have it, I wouldn't have known where to put it. Foreign, what do they call it? World music, something like that. It would have been in there, like, which no one ever goes and shops it. If you notice they don't have a section here because I take it every time they do it. Shake it records. Joey edited the Scribble Jam videos originally. Didn't have anybody to edit. I'm not sure where Joey picked up editing. Like if he was already editing workshop videos, I don't know if he did a memory screen or any of those. I remember watching memory screen. Side note, whoever was doing memory screen was really dope. There were some analog effects on there, outboard effects that didn't make any sense to me. So we had him editing the early Scribble Jam videos. So that's how we met. Fat Nick. At that point in the what, mid late 90s, all the cats that skated knew each other. And Nick had maybe just opened Anonymous or was just getting ready to open Anonymous. Joey was always there. We needed Joey to do the Scribble Jam video. He was the only one that knew how to do videos and knew how to do them good. Right. That's us sitting in Joey's basement for 16 hours watching videos render. I think he did the first handful like up until when they got into dvds he was still doing them if you were to watch them all you can see when it's someone kind of ripping off joey's style as opposed to joey doing it yeah i didn't get paid anything joey didn't get paid anything that company right there cease and desist he put out this he reissued four other records of mine all at once this all happened like four and then that came out these records were actually keeping that cease and desist company afloat and they were in Halifax. They flew me up there for a show. Everything was really cool to do, it was really nice. Yeah. You know, he's really nice, he's your friend. So it's time to get paid. So I didn't make any money, Joey didn't make any money, nobody made any money except that dude and Landspeed who did the distribution. Right. No. Or was that just like, hey? That was, yeah, this? I mean, Joey was already doing Scribble Jam videos. We weren't, we didn't think anything like that. You know, like, he's like, can you do this? And I'm like, cool, like, it's connected to Workshop. And in my mind, it's like, you know, it's, I get to do music for, like, I've sampled Memory Screen. So I'm getting to do music for, like, videos that I grew up watching kids skate to. I didn't care about the skating. I just like the editing of the, you know what I mean? I wasn't going to skate and break my hands. Yeah, but I mean, when I skate, I'm old. When I skate, you were just getting from point A to point B. When kids were doing like real tricks, that was not gonna happen. It's not that I didn't try. It just didn't work out very well. Yeah, I mean, we're talking those plastic ones, like with the big wheels on it, like uh, we're talking the 70s. When he gave me the timeline, he gave me a, a, a deadline too. I'm guessing maybe two weeks tops, if that long. Like, I didn't have to do a whole lot of scratching and stuff like that. He made it really clear that anything unusual or 
out of the ordinary would be perfect. I had a bunch of records like that that you couldn't really use. Rappers couldn't use them, thank God for that. And so <laughs> I was throwing records out, you know, records in there that like, I was never gonna have a reason to use unless it was just for my personal, like just Mr. Dibbs releases. I don't remember being hard at all. Like I remember floating through it like it was no problem and then turning it in and waiting, like cringing, waiting for him to be like, yeah, you need to redo. And him being like, yeah, got it. He just adjusted a few, like, you know, maybe slow down that trick to fit to the beat. And that was it. Um, yeah, maybe I might. Probably weren't emailing files back then. Oh, no. He might have been, but I wouldn't have had any clue how. I, nah, no, I wouldn't have been emailing a file. Plus, it would have taken a year. If you took, you know, 50 rappers and put them there, like, everybody gets a beat. Here's every lyric for all of me. Me, 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 car. Me, 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 girl, me. But me, on a serious note though, me, 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 me. So, you know, it's boring. Skate video is great. There's no me. The me is they show and prove. Like if you can skate and you're in the video, you've already shown and proved. There's not much talking in the videos. Yeah. I don't have to scratch like a maniac. It's more like, it's like scoring a movie. And the only thing that's underneath there is I still get a kick out of when uh, someone lands a trick and they will leave the sound in there. So it's like, doom, doom, oh, and then it cuts off. Yeah. Like that, slam sound. It's just skating in music. Can't, it's like scoring a movie. Can't get any better than that. It's like an ongoing chase scene. I would guess 500 to 1,000. But then again, they could have done 10,000 and we would have never known. Yeah. And uh, you know, I mean, that guy's really nice. The dude that ripped us off, he's still really nice. I know where he's at. I can't go to Canada. <laughs> I'm not allowed in Canada. Not because of that, but I'm not allowed in Canada, so there's no real threat. People are like, you can get the attorneys to do it. I'm like, yeah, and I'll spend all the money. And then you have to prove something from before 2000. I don't know how the records were kept. I mean, I can tell you that I'd love to run into him one day. Way Mason one day. There's a lot of money. And yeah, maybe it was way more than that. Yeah, uh, we didn't, nobody made any money. Like, I don't have anything bad to say about Habitat or, or Workshop about that. Like, when I mentioned it to Joey when we were doing the, the last thing for the Thrasher video, he's like, do you ever get paid for it? I'm like, no, you? And he's like, no. And I said, like, you know, it was 20 years ago. Right. We're still talking about getting paid for it. Right. Yeah, so like videos after that for other people, that became a thing where they might send me footage. 90% of them were like, so if you can make it sound like photosynthesis primitive track, specifically the Brian winning part, that would be cool. Have I had a thousand requests, 999 of them, or can you make it sound like the Brian winning part? So you go from there, and I do, as much as I possibly can anyway. I did. I was right up there at the Esquire. I remember none of them knew how to run the audio equipment. And so like I was sitting in the back row just kind of waiting to see what Joey had done. And they're like, hey man, we don't know how to do any of this. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like I think they just rented a theater and didn't know how to go from there. And they didn't have the wires. And I happened to have like a RCA to quarter inch in my pocket because that's what DJs do, they carry around, and that's not true, I just happen to have it. And I went up there, I'm like, so what's going on? I'm like, we have this, and it has to go into here to come out of there, and I'm like, I kind of remember milking it and watching Nick panic. He's like, what are we fucking what are we gonna do? <laughs> like West Side Cincinnati, dude, what are we gonna do? Somewhere between pouting and panic. And I was like, with this, and he plugged it in and plugged it in, then they poked it on, and there it was, yeah. premiere. I haven't watched that video since, since that day. Oh yeah, I actually have this too. Just I've only watched it one time. No, I just found it the other day going through a box. No, you know when I see it, I see it online. Like I repost it when other people are like, hey, I found the orange tape, and then they'll put up the same. I've probably posted 
every part of this video 20 times because someone will put it up like, have you ever seen the winning part? And I'm like, I'll put it back up. And kids still like it like they never saw it before. Right. Last time I saw this was at the premiere at the Esquire. <laughs> I'll listen to my After I'm done with it, I might listen to it two or three times and I never hear it again. I DJed down the street at an art show last weekend. I had to play like four hours, so I played my own records that I hadn't heard for anywhere from 25 to 10 years. And I'm like, oh, this is, I did that. That's awesome. Nope, I don't listen to it. Once it's done, it's done. I don't want to hear it anymore. Not because I don't like it, just when you're making it, like, this one, that's all I listened to for two weeks. Now, the, like the last one I did for Joy, I had like two months to do it. And it was six minutes. So for two months, that's all you heard in the studio. So if you're upstairs trying to sleep to go to work, you know every single beat and hi-hat and little quirk in the whole thing. Yep. It'll get played and I'll hear it, but I'm not, half the time it'll come on and so, unless it's the winning part. Someone will be like, yeah, that's your shit. And I'm like, what? And then I'll, have to, I'll pause and have to listen. I'm like, oh, oh. But that's with all the records. I like the intro, the, the very first intro, because it's off. It's not 4-4. Four, four, it's off time. And so it doesn't play like boom, cack, boom. It's, yeah. man it's the winning part I mean for me it was all like watching dudes skate to my music was really cool and then the fact that I can't do any of that shit made it that much cooler in my mind I kind of did that yeah. like they're doing the tricks but it's only because my music was there yeah. without the music there was no trick right. it's not true but that's how it felt when I watched it yeah it was like watching a superhero to your music right. yeah I did. I couldn't tell you. No. Oh, Deerdick. You know who I remember? I remember uh, Dill because, um, oh. Watch it. Holy shit. Pull that up to the camera for me. That's Dill right there. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody that I remember, no offense, all kind of had the same general look. Like here we're like, this is when baggy pants were fucking janko. Out to here in the shoes and the hoodies, not Dill. That dude had pants that looked like you had to paint them on and peel them off. Whatever shoes he wanted, whatever fucking ripped shirt, gnarliest looking dude and could skate his ass off and didn't give a flying shit. And he stood out from all of them because he was the only one that didn't give a fuck what the rest of them were doing. He was gonna, I'm gonna do a deal, fuck you. Everyone else was really cool too, but I just, he stood out in my mind because you're like, he seemed like the most uncontrollable dude, but he could back it all up. He was the one I remember the most. When photosynthesis came out, then there was a was some trade show they flew me out to. Slayer played after me. It went me then Slayer. <laughs> Not even kidding. Fucking Slayer played after me. Like I'm standing back there, like with DJ Fingers, who was exhibits DJ at the time. He's like, "What are you gonna do?" I was like, "I'm gonna do like everything Slayer's not gonna do." Cause I had I was gonna do a whole bunch of Slayer shit too. So I only had to DJ like 10 minutes. So I just made it look like a basically like a wall of death. I warmed up the crowd for Slayer and got away with it. Like nobody booed, no one, yeah, it worked. Well, I had people in the crowd to start to pit so that there'd be nothing to boo about. You gotta worry about getting kicked and punched. After I did that and the video was huge by then, by the time I got back home, I remember walking into like the living room's full. And so there's the big workshop habitat box and every company you could think of just stacked to, literally to the ceiling. You couldn't get through the living room and half, I'm like, I don't know what to do with a snowboard, you know, like. We did shit like took, took decks that were already put together because we didn't know how to do any of that either. We had to put them together. When we put furniture, we put like washers and dryers on them and ran them off of cliffs and filmed it. That happened. Basically, the neighborhood kids that had this parking lot to this church that was right below, there was a big hill so you could jump the hill and they would skate all the time. And so I'm like, there's like 30 of them and here I am with all this shit and everyone's like, you should sell it. And I'm like, yeah, fuck that. It'd be cool to give it to those kids. Yeah. So I walked down there and they all knew the video without knowing me. And I started like, you guys want the orange tape? And they're like, how do you have it? I'm like, I made the music. And I'm like, no shit. And I'm like, yeah, hold on. And wheeled out this tub of decks. I'm like, have at it. Shoes, yeah. decks, trucks, grip tape, everything they could possibly want. I was the hero over there for like 
Yeah, like three years. I, I intentionally didn't move from that place. They would all come skate. Like I had a mini skate park in the church parking lot because I just kept giving them decks and they kept sending them, so. No, I have the orange tape. In the same box with the orange tape, I found all the old uh, workshop stickers that are super creepy now. Yeah. No, really creepy now. Yeah, there's literally the virus is coming and it says like 20, might say 2018 or something, but like everything on those stickers. And if you knew those dudes, you knew they were ultra serious about all that shit. And I'm holding stickers like, fucking hey, dude, all of this happened. Way to go, guys. <laughs> I'll take that off your hands. That's a good one. Jason Dill. Yeah, he went the same path as me. He got all fucked up, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so did I. I died twice for drinking alcohol. No, I mean, I literally died. I crashed my liver and died of congestive heart failure. I was dead for 54 seconds. Got back. Managed my way out of that. But I owned a restaurant inside of a bar. And I went about a year, and then I'm like, well, you know. And did the same shit again. Yeah. It's only cool. Let me explain it to cool. the kids. When you die the first time and, and you get away with it, it's super gangster. When you die for the same thing the second time, you're a fucking moron. So the same shit happened the second time, it, and it was alcohol-related, meaning I fell down a big flight of hardwood steps on and split my head open and broke this arm, this shoulder, all these ribs, all these ribs, that leg. I'm pretty fucked up, and, but I had, a, I had this big festival, like atmosphere, Ali, Merce, Nas, all this shit. And so I did not go to the hospital. I still did the festival, which I don't remember. Apparently I killed it. And then I went from there back to the house, went to the hospital, died again at, at my wife's hospital she works at. So it was cool because my wife was there to watch me die twice. That's super comfortable on your wife, trust me. That last time on the way to the hospital, like you went to your primary care physician, he's like, yeah, you should be dead. You, in fact, you're probably gonna die, so Go to the ER, they'll give you a room. So my wife had already, you know, called ahead. They knew I was coming. I drank the last beer right then. Like, I'm, if I'm going to fucking hospital to die, bro, buzzy. It was like Steel Reserve, not even gonna lie. I loved Steel Reserve. So bad, too. <laughs> but I loved it. Drank that, went to the hospital, died again. It brought me back again. So then we're at about a minute 54 total time dead. Walked out of the hospital about two and a half weeks later, and that was it. I was seven years ago, oh, yeah. and I'm like, I'm done. Yeah. like, you can go to, I'm like, I don't need to go to shit. Right. No one needs to say a fucking word, I'm done. Yeah. Like, well, you know, if you need, I don't need anyone to talk to. I'm the dumbass, I did it, I'm done. And that was it. You died twice, yeah. stupid. You know, like there's, you know, it could have been, been like a car wreck or something and you'd have felt bad. I didn't, yeah, I, just, I fell down the steps like a dumb shit. One, how many times you get to tempt fate like that? And two, really, it's the same dumb shit or you're that dude. It's a good way to piss away your career and everything. So. Yeah, I think Jason turned it around. <laughs> oh, he recently, did. So, yeah. no, I saw him on that uh, epically latered. Yeah. I saw him on there. I couldn't believe it. I was like, holy shit, yeah. he actually pulled it all back. Yeah. Oh. Now, this I did do. I did this myself. I duplicated those, and this is my the template on my dad's printer. Like, what do you, you remember the little package? What? Yeah. Avery. Avery, that's an Avery template. And so, yeah, see? It's a Max L tip. used to buy them at Sam's. And then I printed those on my dad's printer because no one else knew how to do it. And then this was when I was doing uh, covers at Kinko's. And so I'd go into Kinko's with like a thousand covers and I would cut them two at a time by hand. And I was doing that from the beginning of me selling tapes, so 88. And sometime during this tape, this dude that's back there who knew who I was, he's like, hey, are you cutting tape covers? I'm like, same as I do every night at two in the morning for two hours. He's like, you know, we have a machine and like, it's like 25 cents and I've cut like a thousand at a time. And I'm like, dude, I've been coming here for 12 years and you've worked here five of them and you're just now telling me. He's like, well, I just thought about it. Like you're back there, you've been here for years cutting covers. I'm like, why didn't you tell me this five years ago? I just didn't think of it, man. He started cutting the covers for me, but then CDs. And so then there was no cover cutting. Yeah, but I did all those by hand. I don't know, a couple hundred maybe? No. Do you want that one? No. Good. <laughs> <laughs> you keep it. I have that, I wish I had a tape deck in the car. I probably have a tape. 
I never, th I never threw anything away. I just never kept anything of mine. I might have a tape. I have a record though. I have one. Yeah. Well, let me rephrase that. My wife Laura has a record of mine. So all the records I made, like you got a copy? No. She have a copy? Yes, she has copies. I literally have one. Of the LP. One. I, I was rearranging stuff, doing the thing where you're like, I'm gonna make the row of all my releases, and I'm like, how do I only have one of these? I was surprised I had that one. People ask a lot though. Yeah. Yeah. I hope you guys reissue it one day. Gonna we were gonna. There was somebody trying to get me to reissue it recently, and I'm like, well. Now that's you. Yeah. Now it's worse on the turnaround. And I have the hookup with the place where it goes quicker, but yeah. my turnaround is five months. So not counting, I can get the, the lacquers and the plates done like that, but five months turnaround. Like I have three records I turned in that'll be back in September, but that's me knowing that dude. Yeah. And he's not taking any more orders till June. Most places are quoting cats like a year, a year and a half. What about a seven inch? You guys could do a seven inch? That's seven inch. I just turned in three seven inches. That's yeah. what I did. Yeah. Five months. Yep. That would be good on a seven inch. Thing. That's what I, 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 you yeah. know what you can get, away, the only thing I can get away with is I can get test pressings. You right. can get 50. Right. So that doesn't really count. Right. They're white labels, but it could be kind of cool. It looks bootleg. I can go <laughs> forever. Or at the very end, I'm like, all right, that was a good rehearsal. And we're going to do it for real now. <laughs> I like this. I got this one. This is a good record. It's a really good record. So these are all, these are some of the samples from Prison of the Trail. I wouldn't remember them. I, 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 I remember this one because this one is still sitting in the, in the Castrucci crate. Yeah. So in the studio, there's like a big crate like that yeah. up here on a shelf. And so anytime like that or, see, they don't have any of those records here because I buy them all, but there's a whole row of those and that. Let's see here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know this one good too, Freddie Hubbard. Yeah, I have no idea what I would have used really? all of that. <laughs> <laughs> all things considered, Primitive Tracks was pretty pretty light on the sampling because it was, the whole thing was like, uh, George, like, you know, you're making a vibe. You want to be a vibe. You want to develop, develop this vibe. Okay. That's the polite way of saying, hey, man, let it go for three minutes and don't do shit. Right. I don't know what I, what I do with this one. Which one is that? I don't really even have this one. Few hundred thousand. So the walls are, you know, all the walls, top to bottom, records, 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 and then a couple storage things with extra stuff. Ah, oh, man. Um, I don't know. That's a hard one to, that's a hard one. Me, me, me. I like them both. That's a tough one. My two favorite rap videos, period of all time, one's Jay Z. 99 problems and one is Nas made you look and essentially they're the same video, right? That could go either way depending on what you're playing. Right. No opinion. I mean, I liked them both, right. but I didn't, I wasn't one sided or the other. I do. However, fact, I have the exact same year, day, hour, minute birthday as Tupac. Fact. I'll show you my ID. Like literally to the minute, to the second. If it were gonna go on that, like, then I would be like, well, we right. kind of have the same birthday. I'll go with Bootsy Collins. Okay. You called it. <laughs> He's cool. He's a really nice dude, too. And Gator Tail, man. You, Willis Gator Tail Jackson. You know, I sample this all the time. You ever had Gator Tail, Tim? You ever sit down with a good plate of Gator Tail? It's delicious, man. You don't know nothing about it. You gotta add Bobby Green or Johnny Grimm's about Gator Tail, buddy. Hey, Willis Gator Tail Jackson. You know that dude. He hangs out with Barry, this dude. 
man, who, listen, here's my new album cover, right? <laughs> and then the conversation, I want to be on the back of the cover with you. Barry, I'm going to be on the cover with you. No. Put me on the back cover with you, Barry. Please. I want to be on the back cover. Oh, it's Nadia's theme, so that's Nadia. That's, that's sealed. I didn't know those drums. Where'd you find this? Here? These used to be all throwaway records back in the day. Yeah. They might be worth more now just in general. Like, got it. This is a good, this is a, not a cheap record. It shouldn't be. This dude just looks super pissed. Like, I mean, why am I in here doing this shit for you? How many more fucking pictures do we have to take, Tim? No, he's like, who put these planets behind me? This is bullshit. <laughs>